All right, what's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Shooter. Today we are going to be talking about some load development that I've been doing with my brand new 6.5 Creedmoor Proof Research Replacement Barrel that I just put on my Uinta Precision Rifle. Real quick, I just want to mention I do have West Desert Shooter merch available. If you guys are looking for a West Desert Shooter shirt, hit the link down in the description. You're also going to find a link to Shoot Steel which at the time of posting this video, these guys are putting up a 30% off sale. Definitely get in there. They have an awesome Know Your Limits rack for 22s and air rifles. And then they have a bunch of 3 8 thick AR 500 steel that is absolutely tough. I've shot my six millimeter ARC at it at 100 yards and there wasn't even like a crater at all. And that's a pretty tough hit to take at 100 yards. So badass steel, definitely check those guys out and all the links that I've placed down below to Uinta Precision as well as Arc and Optics. Quite a few of those links are affiliate links and I will mark them as such so you will know how you are supporting me down below. All right, getting to it. This is my proof research barrel that I just put in my Uinta Precision UPR-10. This is an AR-10 rifle with a bolt action upper from Uinta Precision. That's how they got started, that's their specialty. So what makes this rifle different is that it's got a bolt action and it is not semi-auto. However, you can pop out your two pins and put in a semi-auto upper, which is super awesome. Um, anyway, getting to it, it is a 23 inch long barrel. I think it's somewhere 23 is what it ended up at uh, finish length. And if you guys don't understand what a proof research barrel really is, Obviously it's got this crazy finish on the outside. That is real cured carbon fiber. And it is still a steel barrel on the inside. You can see just a touch of silver peeking through on the corner and then up on the crown. So basically Proof Research uh, cut rifles their barrels so they make really high end barrels to start with. And you can get a solid steel barrel if you want from those guys. But uh, what they do is they turn them down to a very small profile which is their trademark secret as far as how, what kind of profile they run, what contour they run, and then they fully wrap it in carbon fiber, cure it, and then they actually run it on a lathe and cut it to the finished contour that it is. So the big benefit here is that the carbon does not heat up like traditional steel does. It is more rigid for the size that it is. So basically their selling point is a lightweight barrel that shoots like a heavyweight barrel because it's rigid. Uh, compared to how thin the steel barrel is underneath. So there's your quick sales pitch on why Proof Research is the way that it is. So there absolutely is a steel barrel on the inside, just so you're aware. So out on this shooting trip, I did run an Arkan Optics SH4 Gen 2. This one is my 6 to 24 because it's my AR-10. I figure I'll be reaching out a little further with that one. I run the 4 to 16 SH4 Gen 2 on my UPR-15. So that's the Uinta Precision slightly smaller package with the UPR-15. Through all of my testing that I've been shooting here, I have been running an OSS Magnum tie suppressor. This guy has a 338 bore through the middle of it, so you could shoot a 338 Lapua if you choose to do so. Um, really awesome can. Uh, surprisingly, OSS is known for limiting the amount of back pressure on a semi-auto rifle. However, with their QD system and repeatable return to zero, they make great precision rifle cans as well as uh, running them on your semi-auto. They're not going to change your gas system settings. So if you kind of want a one can to do it all for your rifles, definitely take a good look at OSS. That can is full titanium. It's a large can, but it weighs right around 17, 18 ounces, something like that. So just over a pound, but there's a lot going on on the inside. Uh, pretty impressive that they can get the uh, weight that they can with those. So definitely like that can for sure. Especially with the QD system, I swap it from rifle to rifle. Super easy, cannot complain about that. All right, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what's going on. Today, we are talking about my reloading components and what I did for load development on my proof research barrel. As you can see off in the left-hand corner over there, I've got the ADG brass case. Um, so everything I'm firing today is 6.5 Creedmoor, large rifle primer, 6.5 Creedmoor brass. This stuff is American made, extremely high quality, like way up there on quality. These guys are absolutely one of the best brass manufacturers out there. And uh, the primer pockets really hold up well, even when you're pushing pressures higher. One of the awesome things about these guys is that they run a thicker case wall design. 
So you will actually change your load data just slightly compared to what most load data is out there. You typically need a grain or two less powder to get the same velocities as advertised in the reloading manuals, obviously dependent on your rifle setup. But uh, you're gonna get more velocity with less powder using ADG brass, so be sure to check them out. If you guys are looking to get 10% off ADG brass, just type in WDS10 at checkout and they will know that I sent you their way. So moving on to the projectiles that I ended up testing, I did take two range trips to collect all this data and trip number one, I was using Hornady 147 grain ELDM bullets as well as Barnes 140 grain match burner bullets. So both a match style bullet, I like to shoot long range, that's my goal here, is to come up with an accurate round to shoot long range with. So Hornady 147s, Barnes 140s. Uh, trip number one, I went out with those both, and trip number two, I only brought out Barnes 140s. The powder I'm using is the old classic for the 6.5 Creedmoor, Hodgdon H4350, and if you're asking me where I got 4350 right now, I've just had it on hand for longer than this whole bullshit dilemma where you just can't get any components. So I just happen to have a couple pounds on hand because I have not had a 6.5 Creedmoor and I've been, re I've been running Reloader 17 in my 6mm Creedmoor beforehand. So just happen to not be using it lately until now where I'm starting to burn through it again. Primers, Federal Premium Large Rifle Match Primers. Uh, that's my go-to on these things. I really like their performance. I've never had an issue with the Large Rifle Match Primers. One last detail I want to cover is that when collecting velocities, I only collected velocities on my trip for number two. Um, I wanted to shoot trip number one without anything attached to the muzzle just to see how the rifle truly would shoot these projectiles. And uh, on trip number two, that's where I brought out my Magneto Speed V3 chronograph. That is absolutely my favorite chronograph on the market right now. Um, I've used the lab radar, I've used the optical stuff, and when it comes just down to, I absolutely want to collect every single velocity that comes out of the rifle, I 100% suggest going with the Magneto Speed V3 chronograph. I'll leave a link down to those guys as well. It's probably going to be an Amazon affiliate if possible. So check that out. It's a great chronograph. Every chronograph has its downsides. So lab radar doesn't touch your barrel, but you have to aim it correctly. Sometimes you'll miss a velocity. It does cool things where it tracks it multiple times down range. I'm not saying lab radars are bad, but they are also more than twice the price of a magneto speed. So uh, that was definitely a consideration when it came to that. Um, a magneto speed does clamp onto your barrel. In my case, my suppressor. So it's obviously going to affect it in some kind of way. So uh, day trip number two for me, I am going to go back out with what looked promising on the velocities and double check my accuracy uh, just to confirm that it is shooting as good as I believe it will. So big fan of Magneto Speed. I also use their target hit indicators for my long range shots where my target will actually flash red. If you guys have seen any of my videos where my targets blink at me, those are from Magneto Speed as well. All right guys, got my super awesome high precision target here. Obviously this was a box. I went out and drew some crosshairs on it with a Sharpie and threw some groups into it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys real quick how I like to measure my groups with calipers at least. So you just take them, zero them out with the caliper completely closed, and then you can grab a projectile. Go ahead and clamp down on the projectile 263, 262, that's good enough. Zero it out there. So now when I measure outside to outside it's going to take away one bullet diameter which is exactly half this direction and half that direction that's going to give me my center to center group size right there um, maybe we could bring that up just a little bit more so it looks like the top left group was six seven five so easy way to do that um, super simple little hack uh, try that out next time see if that helps you get center to center groups um, obviously i think it works pretty good so taking a look at what we've got going on here. On my first range trip, I took out two projectiles and two charges of each. I used to have a 6.5 Creedmoor Schillen barrel in my UPR-10, that was the first one I had. And uh, I came up with pet loads eventually of like my favorite precision rifle rounds. So I started off with a low charge and then I jumped up to my pet load of what the original charge was. So on the 147s, the low charge is 39 and a half 
and the high charge was 40.2. For the lighter bullets, I run a little bit higher charge. So uh, the low charge on that, I ended up just continuing to throw more 40.2 charges just to get a baseline here on the 140s, 40.2 right there. And then the high charge, which was by pet load, was 41 grains. So taking a look, I only did a three shot group on these 147s at 39 and a half grains. And the three shot group looks like it was somewhere right around a half inch. So definitely nothing to complain about there. Uh, half MOA on my first outing with this barrel, feeling pretty good about that. Now I did jump up to five shot groups on everything else. Now we've got the first three right in here, nice and tight. I am shooting these on hot days where it's like 85 degrees out on range. So by the time you're at round number 10, your barrel's warm. So uh, the three shot group, if we want to measure that real quick, like 0.21 and then obviously five shot group, we've got 0.61. So just over a half MOA uh, out at 100 yards with a five shot group. I'm not going to complain about that, especially with no development at all. This is just two random charges that I put slapped in there, hoping that my original good shooting stuff was going to shoot well out of this one. Now I don't have speeds for the 147s. Uh, I didn't have speeds from anything on this trip. This is how this rifle naturally shoots. 40.2 grains, the low charge on the 140s. We've got a four shot group right down in here. Sorry, it's a little tough to record and do this. The first four went into 0.45, so real happy with that. And then if I open this up, we're gonna be right around 5.4 with a full five shot group. Again, right around half MOA, loving this proof barrel so far. 140 grains with 41 grain charge. I ended up with one flyer, so let's check the four shot group one more time, see where that puts us. That one is less than 4.6, probably 4.5. And then if we open that up, five shot group is not as pretty, but you know what, whatever, stuff happens. Uh, 0.9 inches there going on with the full five shot group. So it is what it is. Um, obviously you're starting to deal with Mirage at that point. I am human, sometimes I make mistakes. The second trip out, now we are talking. I've got velocities here. Let me pull those up so we can cover them. As we go, I just want to make sure I get everything lined up correctly. So starting off with 40.2. First shots of the day, cold bore. We put five shots right into point, oh, creeping up on it, 0.75. Let me talk about what's going on here though, because we do have a suppressor with a magneto speed hanging off the end of the barrel. A magneto speed is going to affect how they shoot how much i'm not sure yet so the really important part on this trip is velocities so with the 40.2 grain charge i'm going to throw a picture up here on screen i ended up with an sd of 2.4 and an average velocity of 2667 that sd is ridiculously good so i am a big fan of 40.2 right out the gate uh, it's shooting three quarters of an inch with a can on there Obviously, if we drop that down to a four shot group, it's a lot tighter. So I would hope that this thing can shoot better than that. That's 0.497 on the four shot group. So half MOA with a four shot, obviously I'm going to measure the full five anyway. Um, but we'll kind of notice that uh, that one's got a flyer. The next charge up, which is going to be 40.4, as you can see here, 40.2, 0 0.4, 6, 8, and up to the next 41 grains. 40.4, uh, not quite as good of a SD, 11.7. It's just over where I try and hit my target mark. You want to keep it under 10 feet a second standard deviation just for absolute precision, long range. You don't want your bullets landing high and low because of velocity spreads. Uh, looks like a four shot group. We ended up with 0.7. And this is probably one of the worst uh, groups that I've seen this rifle shoot so far at 1.2, again with the chronograph on it. We'll find out if that's uh, something that it will shoot without the chronograph. But these five right there with the little sharpie marks are the 40.4. 40.6, I guess 40.4, average velocity 26.79. 40.6, we got ourselves up to 26.96 
and an SD of 8.6. So our SDs came back down where I want them. Uh, the group looks terrible, not real happy about it. What's interesting, I never adjusted my scope. So first group landed right below, second group slightly right, and then the third group slightly left. So these all landed pretty close to each other. That's like 1.2 inches, nothing to talk about there. 40.8, let's cover velocities there. Average of 2700, SD of 11.2. Um, we can check the four shot group real quick. That looks pretty good. Uh, 0.5 there. Yep, that's exactly what the four shot is. And we ended up with a flyer way down here, which is going to murder our average here. Yep, 1.3 there with the Cron RF on it. Finally, we get up to 41, which was my previous like known good load for my 6.5 Creedmoor. Let's check out what 41 grains is on velocities. Average of 27.17, SD of 13. So it didn't seem to love 41 grains in this rifle. So initially my first two charges, I kind of want to go back out there and shoot, are going to be 40.8 and 40.2. I think without the chronograph on there, it's going to tighten up the group there. Um, if I just shot the same group again, I'd be pretty dang happy. Although uh, the first three were clover leafed and then shots four and five started to land further out. On 41 grains, we can double check our four shot group size there. Need to open it slightly. Somewhere around 6'6", six, six, uh, five shot group's going to be pretty terrible with that flyer that went down low. Let's get it back down in here. Inch and a half, man, that hurts. But uh, you know, at that point I've shot, what, 24 rounds before this last round. It was definitely warm out there. The barrel is going to be warm. I did what I could to keep it cool, but when it's 90 degrees out on the range and you're trying to keep things cool, sometimes it just doesn't happen. However, velocities is what we really care about here. Group size is kind of like, we're gonna find out later, but 40.8 is what I wanna go chase after and 40.2, I'm gonna try that again as well. See how they shoot. So from here, 40.2, 40.8 on the menu and we're gonna see how they perform. After that, we could also do a jump test, but instead of lengthening our rounds, because we're limited to magazine length, I may actually shorten our rounds to increase the jump to the lands. It sounds like counterintuitive, but that will make a difference. At some point, uh, the bullet being further off the lands can get back into an accuracy node. Um, I'll probably try like 30,000 shorter which uh, isn't crazy, but I think that's what Berger suggests when uh, doing your different jump testing. So we're gonna get back out to the range with this thing. Uh, next time we're going out without a Magneto because we know what our velocity should be. And uh, we're gonna go from there, see how this rifle likes those loads. Really looking forward to it. Uh, as far as pressure goes, here is a high charge. Here is a high charge. Uh, this rifle does crater just a little bit, but uh, so I don't run like crazy high pressures on this thing. And that's about as much cratering as I really saw across all of these charges. You can see a little bit of cratering, but I try and keep away from the max pressure stuff just to not pierce primers basically. Well, all right guys, that was a ton of talking. I know this is not a short video, but you know what? I wanted to cover the details, really talk about what was going on and uh, kind of explain how my testing has gone so far with my proof research barrel. I hope you guys enjoyed the details. I know that when watching a reloading video, I really like to hear most of the details. I also understand that's a lot of numbers getting thrown back and forth. Hopefully it wasn't a numbers overload and uh, you were able to follow along pretty easily with the pictures supplied from my range strip. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. You guys seriously are the reason that I'm able to do this. Again, if you wanna check out any links down below, I will mark which ones are affiliate links and how you can support me. But any of the companies seen here are super badass. I should touch on the fact that this is an inflection DE ammo case. This is their 100 rounder. Uh, they also sell a 50 round kit with Magnum or standard. Uh, the standards for like the 308 size cases, the Magnum obviously for larger stuff. Uh, the 100 rounder is their medium size. so. Creed more size stuff. Um, definitely check out Inflection DE. Those guys are super awesome. Huge thank you to you into Precision. Their rifles are absolutely one of my favorites. OSS can super awesome on all of my rifles and anyone else here mentioned in the video. Thanks everyone for watching. Drop a comment down below what you think. Let me know what I should try with my proof research 6.5 Creedmoor. 
I greatly appreciate all you guys watching this far, and we will see you in the next one.